Great Yarmouth is gearing up for the summer season. This town on the coast of Norfolk has been a seaside resort since the 18th century. Famed recently as one of the top 10 Brexit supporting areas in Britain, now some here have the chance to vote again. A third of the council is up for election on Thursday. Cast your mind back to 2014, the last time these council seats were up for grabs and the political landscape was very different. UKIP was riding high in the polls, particularly round here, down the eastern coast of England. How's the fishing trade? Fishing ain't too bad, but that beast from the east really curtailed the shellfish. Water temperature's two months behind where it should be. I last met local fisherman Paul Lines ahead of the 2015 general election. Have you had a lot of breaking nets recently? Oh, well, when we're trawl fishing, nearly every hole you get broken net. Now we start pulling the hole back together again. In 2015, Paul was staunchly UKIP, but by last year's general election, he ditched the party and was campaigning for the Tories. If you voted for UKIP, that was a wasted vote because they weren't never got to get in, in power. So. That was all to stop Jeremy Corbyn getting in power. But he now feels betrayed by the Conservatives' Brexit transition deal that ties Britain into the common fisheries policy for longer. It's gone down about as badly as if Paul had discovered his catch had escaped through a broken net. Because we're now not leaving, we would all love to know what's so great that we got traded off for. All these coastal communities that can start rebuilding from next year won't now start rebuilding their fishing businesses and their local communities and local economies until when, whenever, if we ever leave now, people say. Even so. Well, Katie, I will vote Conservative, really, because they aren't doing a bad job of what limited resources they've got, and that's better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Sometimes it can feel like there are two Englands, with the main party scouring for more votes, while Labour's apparently doing well in London. Outside the capital, some voters have been looking elsewhere. One crucial thing that happened in the general election last year, and indeed in the local elections a few weeks before that, is that places that voted Remain moved strongly towards the Labour Party, but conversely, places that voted Leave were the places where the Conservatives did best. Now, outside of London, and the many parts of outside of London where Leave did well, Labour may actually struggle, and we may be looking at net Conservative gains. But Great Yarmouth's Labour Party has a secret weapon, a wooden spatula for easy leaflet delivery. They may need more in the battle for a town where 71% voted leave and where UKIP took five council seats from the party four years ago. Do you think that Labour will win some of those UKIP seats? Or is it that we mainly their hope. vote goes to the Conservatives? We obviously hope, but uh, we have been putting in a lot of work and there's been a lot of positive uh, energy going into our uh, campaigning, etc. And well, when, because we've been talking to people, because we've been listening to people throughout the whole year, uh, we feel that Labour certainly has gained a lot of respect locally. But Labour's in a lonely place round here. Four years ago, Alex Mayer was elected Labour's only MEP in this eastern region. There are three Conservative and three UKIP MEPs. At this point in a parliament, shouldn't Labour be doing better? Well, I mean, I think that Labour are doing quite well across the east of England. Um, it's always a tough um, region um, for us, and places like Great Yarmouth switch between Labour and Conservative. I think we could m well make some gains here in Great Yarmouth and across the east of England. I don't think it's going to be earth-shattering overnight, but I think we're making steady progress. There was a time when another party saw this area as its heartland, tapping into anti-immigrant, anti-EU sentiment. But UKIP's short-lived heyday in various seats across eastern England ended last year. Whereas in the 2015 general election, UKIP was eating into a large section of the vote, at the general election two years later, in almost every one of those seats, they were down to single figures.
Voters have already switched allegiance and here in Great Yarmouth, so too have some elected officials. Last year, seven UKIP councillors defected to the Conservatives. Their decision put this council back into Tory hands. One of those involved told me people on the doorstep kept saying UKIP's job was done. And for that person, taking the Tory whip felt like coming home. It looks like UKIP's vote has flown. The party's projected to lose all the 125 council seats it's defending in England on Thursday. Catherine Blakelock stood for UKIP here in last year's general election. The number one issue in this town, if you ask them what is the number one issue, it's immigration, immigration, immigration and immigration. Then why are they not voting for you? Because there have been times when we have made a mess of things and Nigel, who was the linchpin, left, you know, but there's such political volatility going on. When you're they, very likely to lose all your councils. No, we won't. A lot of people feel politically homeless. I don't care whether we get wiped out in this election because the fight has hardly started. It doesn't but if you matter. get wiped out, that's a sign. No, it doesn't. Nobody wants it, you. It, it, no, it doesn't mean that. The Conservatives hope to capitalise on UKIP's implosion. Their devoted foot soldiers out in all weathers, umbrellas and raincoats in evidence, though no handy wooden spatulas. Great Yarmouth's MP is also Tory party chairman. Round here, I mean, this time four years ago, UKIP swept the board. They took, you know, how many, 10 out of the 13 seats that were up. Some from you, some from Labour. Yep. Do you think that those voters just go back to Conservative and Labour now? Not necessarily. I mean, what I can say is what we saw in the general election last year, where in certain parts of this constituency, the UKIP vote that had been maybe previously Conservative and certainly supports what we as a party stand for, but wanted to leave the EU, came back and voted for us. But UKIP still picked up a fair few thousand votes here, and effectively a lot of that was the people who previously maybe thought about or voted Labour not going back to Labour. Until recently, Brandon Lewis was Immigration Minister. We met in the wake of the Windrush scandal, though before Amber Rudd resigned. He's clear what signal the government should be sending out. Do you think that the government's target, the 100,000 net migration target, do you think that should be dropped? Well, I think people do want to see that we're getting control so of migration. Target. So I think we do need to make sure we're very clear with people that we are focused on that and, and actually making it sustainable levels down to those tens of thousands, I think is an important part of that. And I think here what people really wanted to see was a situation where the government, UK Parliament, UK government has control and we get to it make the like decisions. You got well, no, actually, well, of course, at the moment we're still in the EU. Boat building has a proud history in Great Yarmouth. Galley goes in here. Alan Goodchild started his company 40 years ago and now has 40 staff. He attributes UKIP's previous strength round here to people feeling ignored. All right? Yeah. I think that's why it had the support in rural areas where you've got farming, boat building and hands-on skills and fishing are all very, very important industries. And why do you think it's melted away? Why do you think it's not happening anymore? I think the majority of people think the job has been done. Like nearly three quarters of Great Yarmouth's voters, Alan chose to leave the EU. But that doesn't stop him worrying about his Polish workers and how immigration policy affects individuals. The government needs to actually reinforce the message that they are welcome, nothing is really going to change, at least I hope it isn't. But the controls can be implemented in a way that can stop the surge of people coming to the UK who just want to capitalise on being in the UK for no contribution to the system. Local elections aren't particularly illuminating, other than as a marker of the state of the parties right now. Despite the national story, immigration isn't the focus. People are more likely to vote on bins than bigger issues. If views in this once bustling fishing port are anything to go by though, it looks like UKIP's had its time in the sun. <laughs>